It's Billy from Strong's Adventures here. On my video of the cooking setup, Tony Johnson asked me about the dimensions of the hooks so that maybe he could build his own. Tony, I'm gonna do a little better than that. I'm gonna give you the dimensions on all of it. The swing grates, the box, all of it. That way, if somebody wants to make their own, they can go ahead and do that. Y'all hold on, we'll be right back. All right, to start out with, this is just a soft gun case. That's what I carry all my stuff in. Rhonda got it at Academy Sports and Outdoors. Now, to hold my hooks, and I usually have a pair of tongs in here or something else. I don't have them in here right now. But to hold my hooks, she found this on the internet, on the interwebs. This is a chisel bag for carpenters. But it seems to hold my stuff good and it keeps all the hooks from clanking around. These are our two supports for our swing grills. That I, I made these. So, let's get to the uprights. These are made out of three quarter inch um, roll stock. And as you can see, it's just got a horseshoe welded to it. The dimensions on these are 59 inches, which is a one inch shy of five feet. If I, if I was making these, I'd make them five feet long. Now, that's our up, upright. Now, our crossbar that came with this set is 59 inches. I got this from a place that I was working at because some of the fire pits I use are a little smaller. And I just had a whole, you know, it's easier to have the shorter bar. This one is four feet long. Now the reason the reason I did make this shorter bar is because some of the state parks we go to have the smaller fire rings. And it's just a lot better losing that one foot that you don't have sticking out and something you have to walk around around the fire ring. A foot doesn't sound like a lot, but it is when you're having to shrink up the space that you're cooking on. Okay, here's the hooks. The hooks are made out of half inch round stock. The shortest one is nine inches. The longest one is 17 inches. They are two inches different in each one of these. So you got a nine, you have an 11, 13, 15 and a 17. What this does, this allows you to have 50 degrees, roughly, this is cooking over a fire, roughly 50 degrees difference in each hook, just by lowering it down two inches. Now, I can't really tell you which one's 350 that's all going to depend on how long you stick your uprights into the ground if you're going to use it by beating them into the ground. When I'm using it on my firebox, um, this one's usually 350, the middle one. That's how I designed it and that's pretty much what it does. I shoot it with a thermal gun and that's what we came up with. Okay. 
as you can see, the end of each one is rounded over that it's easier to slide your hot handle on. The dimensions on that is about three inches from the tip to the outside edge. On our hook that hangs on the bar, that's two inches on the outside and about an inch and a quarter on the inside. All right, we're gonna use a piece of string, get a little measurement on this to give you an idea of how long these actually are. Like I said, I didn't build these, so I don't have the dimensions on them. Looks like that one started out at two foot one inches. Okay, I measured the longest one. Now I have the shortest one. And that's gonna be 16 inches. So, I'm not really good at math. The longest one was 25, the shortest one is 16. There's five hooks. The math is up to you. You can do it. All right, and when you're done, they go right into the chisel case. See? You don't want to hear that in your truck, in your car. You, you don't want to hear that while you're driving down the road, trust me. So, they go right into the case. Flip it over. Roll it up. And it's ready to go. All right, for our swing grill, this is the support that goes on the bottom. This is a one inch piece of thin wall square tubing. One inch by one inch. I welded a nut on each side. After I pre-drilled a hole in here, I welded the nut on. And then I just use a nut with a T-handle that I welded to be able to screw these in and tighten them up on the uprights. So that way we can have our swing grill at whatever height we want. I made these three inches long and I welded a one inch flat washer on the top dead center so that it will stay on the three quarter inch upright. All right we'll start out with the small swing grill. It measures 16 and a half by 16 and a half. It's made out of one inch by one inch angle iron. It has stainless steel expanded metal grating on it so I don't have to worry about that rusting. All right I use the one inch by one inch square tubing thin wall again on this. As you can see I welded a nut and put the T-handle on it. I also welded a one inch flat washer. I put a gusset on it. I made this eight inches long and the bottom support is 19 inches long welded to our eight inch piece. I put in a little gusset here to help hold the weight and Okay, my reasoning in having this bolt right here is so that you can tighten it up on your uprights. When you have them sitting there like that, these will always be tight to be able to hold the weight of your swing grill. If you wanna move the swing grill up or down, 
what you're going to do is you're going to, if you're going to move it down, you're going to tighten this bolt up so this won't fall down. You'll loosen these bolts up, slide it down the upright, tighten the bolts back up, loosen this up, and then you'll be able to move it down to where it is sitting on this piece. Then you leave this loose and that lets you swing the grill. That's why it's called a swing grill. All right, let me show you the big grill. Okay, for my big grill, I used the same one inch by one inch angle iron. It measures 25 and a half by 18. It also has the stainless steel grating on it, so I don't have to worry about that rusting up. So, on this one, I made this eight inches also with the one inch washer on the bottom. And I used a 22 inch piece here. The reason I didn't put a gusset on this one is because I only cook meat on this. The other one I knew would have to hold um, Dutch ovens and heavy stuff. Skillets, things like that. Okay, so the fire pan is actually two foot, one inch wide by three foot. This is actually made out of eighth inch flat metal. I had a friend um, use his sheet metal brake and so the whole pan is one continuous piece except for the ends. Then we welded the ends on. The um, angle iron for this is 2 inch by 2 inch angle iron for the feet which we also welded a plate on the bottom so it doesn't just shove down into the dirt. The handles are made out of 2 inch hey Lola flat stock quarter inch long by 6 inches yes I know I have a piece of all thread through here yes it should have a handle on it I haven't gotten to that yet things are on in my life. It's, it's, it's life. Nobody knows life. That was a game. It's not a game now. Anyways, then I welded my thin wall one by one square stock here and that would be six inches long. Also drilled the hole in it, welded the nut on there and I put a bolt through that and that holds my uprights. That keeps my uprights from turning and twisting while I'm shoving all the Dutch ovens across back and forth and all that. Now, how do you keep the water out of here, Billy, if it's raining? Well, everybody drills quarter inch holes in the bottom of they're fire pans when they make these. Well, I've got those. What else do I have? I have a secret weapon. I've got a one inch hole with a piece of one inch round stock and a, I don't know, three by three piece of flat welded on the top of it. So when the downpour comes, you just use your boot, kick that out, all the water runs right out, and your fire just keeps on ginning. Just like the other video, the sides are eight inches all the way around, and we're eight inches off the ground. Um, I figured out that 
pretty much eight inches off the ground. I can build the biggest fire I want and it does not have any heat issue trying to catch anything on fire underneath of it. So, since we have all this out, let's go ahead and put her together. All right, first things first, we're gonna get our grill out. Put that through there. We're gonna tighten this screw up. We're gonna tighten this bolt up. Before anybody puts anything down in the comments, that's a bolt, not a screw. Yes, I understand. And uh, Archimedes principle, yeah, it's still a screw. Keeper on there. Stand this one up. Grab our other upright. Put this one through. up a little bit just to crossbar now we turn our horseshoes where they're holding the uh, upright We're holding the upright, tighten our bolts. Now, like I said before, tighten the top screw up here for your swing grill. Loosen the bolts on your uh, adjuster. And loosen the bolts on the swing grill. And bam, there you go. And that's all you got to do. So, I hope this video helped anybody out that wants to make one. Um, I really love this setup. It, it, it actually works really great for me. Um, all I can say is uh, go out and cook something. And don't forget, don't forget, there ain't no loving like Dutch oven loving.